live stream the meeting. Our subject tonight is bells and pomegranates. We just need a few more seconds. We will go live. Here we go, we are ready. Good evening, shall we all reverently pray as we invite the spirit of God to speak to us. Our subject tonight is bells, and pomegranates. Let us invite the Spirit of God to speak to us. Gracious and kind loving Father who art in heaven, thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. If only people would humble themselves and have a wonderful and a clear understanding to know your marvelous and wondrous ways which you have revealed to us, through the spoken and the written word, through the Holy Spirit in the scriptures, what a different lives we would have. What transformed people we will be. We humble ourselves as we now look at the cross, as we now reverently travel through this wonderful journey. We invite your spirit to speak to us. Please bless us with your presence and anointing. In Christ's name, we humbly pray. Amen. Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome each and every one of you in the sweet name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we begin a brand new series on the sanctuary, on the priestly garments. The Bible is loaded with amazing blessings, and I'm sure the Holy Spirit is going to bless you and me. To begin with, please open your Bibles and come with me to the book of Exodus chapter 28, and we will begin our verses from Exodus chapter 28, and then we will go to verses 1 and 2. Here we go. Let's look at the Bible. Exodus chapter 28. If you look at verses 1 and 2, this is God speaking directly to Moses. Our subject this evening is entitled as bells and pomegranates. Have you seen bells and pomegranates in the sanctuary? If you have not seen, this is high time. Welcome to the opening night as we travel through this amazing journey to find out the intricate details, the spiritual lessons and the values that God has embedded for us through the study of bells and pomegranates. Let's go to verse 33 and I will read it from the King James Version. Please come with me to Exodus 28. And verse 33. And beneath, upon the hem of it, thou shalt make pomegranates of blue and of purple and of scarlet round about the hem thereof, and bells of gold between them round about. God is instructing them to make pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet. Now, that something is getting very interesting here. Let's go to verse 34. A golden bell, a bell that is not simply made out of um, any other metal or brass. It's a golden bell. 
and a pomegranate. Then you look at the order. It's alternate. A golden bell and a pomegranate. Upon the hem of the robe round about. This is the high priest's dress, the garments. And I want you to go to verse 24 one more time. A golden bell and a pomegranate. A golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe round about. Now God instructed Moses that the priest would come before him wearing the robe that had pomegranates and bells. Let me break this thing down because I guarantee by the Holy Spirit's power, by the end of this message, you will be telling your whole friends on Facebook, through Instagram or whatever you want to call it, the social media, and you will tell them, come on, let's get back to bell bottoms. We're going to talk about pomegranates. The use of pomegranates for the robe is not just a design choice. Just because that was the only fruit lying around, there were much more accessible fruits uh, in Palestine, in the Middle East. But God chose the rare pomegranate for a deeper spiritual meaning that would transcend time to speak not only in the Old Testament, but also in the New Testament and in the days to come. Now, I want you to know, people of God, we are going to study very deeply about the garment of the high priest. And it is found in two chapters in the Bible. The first chapter that talks so beautifully and portrays about the garments of the high priest is found initially, firstly, in Exodus chapter 28. But there is also another chapter that speaks so fabulously and paints a wonderful picture of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through the high priestly garments. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this whole week, you're going to hear some stuff that you would never have heard in all your life. This is going to be phenomenal, mind-blowing. It's all about Jesus Christ. Let's go to Exodus chapter 39. As I grab my Bible, I invite you to grab your Bible. Come with me to Exodus 39, and we will look at how the intricate details are meticulously portrayed here. Exodus 39 and verse 22. And he made the robe of the ephod of woven work, all of blue. And there was an hole in the midst of the robe. I want you to come with me to verse 24, Exodus 39, 24. And they made upon the hems of the robe pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet and twined linen. And verse 25, and they made bells of pure gold. It's pure gold and put the bells between the pomegranate upon the hem of the robe. Now see how God is repeatedly emphasizing the details round about between the pomegranates. And let's read verse 26 because we will get right into the meat of the matter in just a short while. A bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate round about the hem of the robe to minister in as the Lord commanded Moses. Now, this evening we are going to study three beautiful spiritual lessons based on bells and pomegranates in the hem of the robe of the high priest. And that is phenomenal. Number one, we are going to look at the decorations that are mentioned here. And we are going to look at the significance of the decorations. Right? I hope you're ready. Please come with me as we look at the bells which were colored with the tassels in the shape of the pomegranates. People of God, I want to just clarify something. Real pomegranate fruits were not hanging. I want you to know they were just with colored tassels in the shape of pomegranates. Now you read it in Exodus 28 and verse 33. The Lord said, beneath upon the hem of it, 
Thou shalt make pomegranates of blue, purple, scarlet, round about the hem thereof, and bells of gold between them round about. Now I want to talk about the bells. I hope it will ring bells in our ears. The bells are of pure gold. It speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ's deity. It speaks of Lord Jesus as the high priest God. Now, I want you to look at the pomegranates made of three colors. Blue. What is so special about blue? Blue is a heavenly origin color. Blue talks about heavenliness. So it speaks about Jesus Christ, so divine, coming and originating from heaven. So Jesus is 100% God. Now let's go to the next one. That's even more interesting. I want to talk about scarlet. Do you know why was Adam called Adam? Because that's a Hebrew word. Adam means made out of the ground or the earth. Adam. That's why he was called Adam. In Hebrew, Adam means ground. And that was a red color. That talks about the humanity of Jesus Christ. So every time you see the hem of the robe and you saw pomegranate, which is blue color, it reminded Jesus is 100% God. And every time you saw scarlet color, it spoke of the humanity of Jesus. And Jesus was not only the son of God, he was the son of man. What is the other color? Purple. Do you know how do you get purple? You mix blue and scarlet in equal proportion, you get purple. There's only one priest. There's only one high priest ever in the history who has blue and scarlet mixed, who is not only God, who is also man. Jesus was 100% God and 100% man. So, blue, God, scarlet, man, purple, son of God and son of man. Now, when you see the bells of pure gold, it talks about Jesus Christ. Now, consider Christ as God and God-man. Now, not just the bells. Let's go to Exodus 28, and let me talk to you about verse 35. And it says, and it shall be upon Aaron to minister. Now, I want to talk about bells. Have you any time given a thought, why do we have church bells? And why do we ring church bells? This is all centered in Exodus 28 in the sanctuary. Let me just read for you Exodus 28 and verse 35. And it shall be upon Aaron to minister, and his sound shall be heard when he goeth in unto the holy place before the Lord, and when he cometh out, that he die not. Praise God. The Bible says in Exodus 28 and verse 37, and it shall be upon Aaron to minister. Jesus Christ is our intercessor. He is our mediator. And he is right now involved in the process of intercessory ministry. And his sound shall be heard. Every time the bells rang as it was alternatively arranged between those beautiful tricolored pomegranate tassel, the sounds were heard. Do you hear the sound of the bells from Jesus Christ? He's interceding. He's your mediator. Now, every time you hear the bell ring, what does that tell? You just take a bell. When you hear the bell ring, there are a few implications. Number one, it has a tongue. It has a ringer inside. Now, this is not just a decorative or an ornamental bell. A bell that has a ringer, sounding of ringing the bells. People of God, I'm not talking about jingle bells. That is pagan. I'm talking about bells and pomegranates coming out from the sanctuary. 
Do you see Jesus Christ gives the voice of bells? In other words, the sounding of the ringing of bells uh, uh, resonates or implicates there is noise and voice. There is someone who is creating with his tongue the voice that speaks in heaven. Sound in heaven of a Lord interceding as he speaks to our father in heaven i'm very excited about my jesus who is ringing bells right in the kingdom of god i want you to come with me to hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25 25 i'm excited to speak about my jesus wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto god by him seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Friends, I have good news for you. I want you to hear the bells ringing. The pomegranates and the bells are active right now with the high priest in heaven. Do you know what does the ringing of bells mean? Christ is praying for you and for me. Now, what an encouragement it is that for me. Christ praying for me. If I know that somebody is praying for me, and I'm excited, and I have to honestly confess, I've been preaching this gospel for the past 22 years by the grace of God. And I know the secret. My mother is a godly woman. She's a woman of prayer. She's always on her knees praying for me. And that's why I have been going for all this while. Now, if my mother prays for me and I'm excited, how enlarged an idea and inspiration is it if I know that Christ is praying for me? His sound shall be heard. Bells were placed all around. Pomegranate and the bells. Bells and the pomegranates. Pomegranates are colored. The pomegranates reminded of sight and the bells reminded of audibility. So you can see by faith Jesus who is in sight in heaven. So it applies both to the Lord Jesus Christ, the particulars of decoration, the bells ringing. Christ's voice is heard through his intercessory prayer. I want to talk to you about the next beautiful fact. Bells and pomegranates in the high priest's garment in the sanctuary. Let's go to the Bible. I want all of you to come with me to Exodus chapter 28. I'm excited. Exodus chapter 28. We're going to look at verse 33. Shall we reverently look at this? Please come with me to verse 33. Verse 33 is very, very phenomenal. And I want you to see what is mentioned there, please. And beneath upon the hem of it, thou shalt make pomegranates of blue and of purple and of scarlet. And upon round about the hem thereof, bells of gold between them round about. Now, I want you to look at the position. In verse 33, it's mentioned twice. What is mentioned twice? Can you make it, please? And I will give you another clue. Go to verse 34. In verse 34, it's mentioned only once. Upon the hem of the robe, round about and in verse 33 it says round about the hem two times now sometimes we don't take time to read it very intricately i want you to look at the position of the bells we have to study the sanctuary so intricately and it's very beautiful a description about jesus christ look at this in verse 33, it's mentioned twice. Round about the hem 
thereof. And in verse 34, upon the hem of the robe round about. In other words, they were attached to the ephod, which we will be studying this week. Now, there was a robe of ephod of all blue color. Now, color is very important. We will study on Wednesday this amazing detail. Now, reminder for all of us is blue is a reminder of heaven, heavenly origin, divine. Do you know that our high priest is Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, not from Aaron's tribe, but from heaven? Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 says, He is a mighty God. The color blue indicates that He is my Lord from heaven. I'm going to talk to you about something and I want you to listen very carefully. The Bible mentions about this in verse 33 and 34, and I'm going to talk about this. Where did you find the bells and the pomegranates? The blue, purple, and scarlet, it was found. Round about the hem. About the hem. Go to verse 34. Upon the hem of the robe. Now what is that town? There was a particular hem. Now the bells were positioned on the border of the hem. Why? Let me try to ask some funny questions. Why was it not positioned, the bells, in the middle? or in the sleeves, or in the neck. Bells and pomegranates were on the hem of the garments. Now, if you go to a tailor, I'm sure most of you women, you're godly and you have the natural gift and the spiritual gift. Some of you are, are seamstress, you do wonderful sewing. When do you put the hem? Please tell answer yourself. This is just common sense. When you put the hem, which means any tailor or seamstress tells you that the work is finished. Why did Jesus put all these in the hem? Because the work of the Lord Jesus Christ was finished. If you put the hem which means you are ready to wear the garment. If you don't put the hem, which means it is still in process, the sewing is still happening, and it is not done. On the other hand, if you put hem, the work is finished. Hem and garment speak of the finished work of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hem and garment, and then the bells and the pomegranates over there, speak of the perfect sacrifice. In other words, Jesus cried on the cross, it is finished. Salvation was completed. Now that was an anticipatory work of the cross. Jesus says in John 17, Lord, I have finished the work. It is finished. In Greek, it is so fabulous. He finished the work, which means the hem was ready. The hem speaks of the finished work. And that's why the bells were positioned on border of the hem, because they speak about the finished work. Bells sound forth the finished work. Praise God. Now, that is so strategically placed, and there is a significance of this verse. Let's study something very interesting. What is the name of the fruit? Pomegranates. Now I want to talk a little bit about pomegranates. I'm so excited to see many of my friends joining me from the Philippines. A very special welcome to my most beloved. A very large portion of my heart has Philippines in my life. Lovely people. Thank you, God's people, for joining. I want to talk a little bit about pomegranates. Pomegranates are fruits. Obviously, 
The priests did not wear the real proma pomegranate fruit, but they were made of materials. But they portrayed the actual fruit. Now, why did God make pomegranate available? Bells remind us of intercession in heaven. Bells remind us of the sound which you hear in heaven through Jesus Christ's prayerful intercessory ministry from the investigative judgment. But pomegranates remind us of the fruit of the intercessory ministry. It's all about Jesus. In the sanctuary, that one entrance is Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The altar speaks of Jesus and the cross. The lamb refers to Jesus. The high priest refers to Jesus. The blood refers to Jesus. The labor refers to Jesus Christ cleansing us. The table of the showbread refers to Jesus Christ being the bread of life. The altar of incense speaks about Jesus Christ offering prayer. Then you go to the candlesticks. It speaks about Jesus being the light. You go beyond the well to the most holy place. That Ark of the Covenant speaks about the holiness of Jesus. The cherubims talk about the angelic. And then you speak about the Shekinah, the glory of God. And then you speak about the mercy seat. Then the Ten Commandments speak of the character of Jesus. It's all about Jesus. The bells speak of the intercessory ministry of Jesus. But how can pomegranates talk about Jesus Christ? Now, the pomegranate reminds of the fruit of the intercessory ministry. I want to talk about how we, as God's people, are being sustained and saved. Now, the pomegranates, I want you to look here, have a rich blessing of having plenty seeds. Now, these float in crimson red. Just as the fruit must be broken to have access to its properties, so was Jesus broken that we would have access to his life-giving, life-restoring properties. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. This book is about the blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. From the coats that covered Adam and Eve, nakedness in Genesis, to the blood of a spotless lamb in Exodus, whose blood was applied to the doorposts and lintels. Isaiah, who talked about a lamb to the slaughter as a sheep before her shearers, and the gospel to the revelation, where we sing, worthy is the lamb that was slain. It starts with the blood in Genesis and ends with the blood in Revelation. If you are going to be saved, if you want to walk in peace and power, it just won't happen because you attend a church or you were baptized or you were a vegetarian or you are a vegan or pay the tithe or keep the Sabbath. It won't happen until you're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Ephesians 1 7 says, redemption through the blood. Colossians 1 20 says, peace through the blood. My faith is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean of Jesus' name. Some through the water, some through the blood, but all must come through the blood to the cross of Calvary. Do you know why pomegranate? I want to go all the way to Revelation 7, 9. Jesus shed his crimson blood to redeem the people. And I want to talk, the pomegranate is the fruit of the ministry of the high priest because he prays and because he intercedes and because he shed his blood and because he presented himself right after the death, burial, resurrection, after ascension to heaven, to the heavenly father. I want you to know, look at the seeds of the intercessory ministry of Christ. Bells and pomegranates. Let's go to Revelation chapter 7. I want you to look at verse 9 after this. I behold, do you know what kind of a multitude? I want to pass. You read it today. And uh, what multitude? 
which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne. Why? And before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Go to verse 14. Let me read the last two lines. And have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. And look at verse 15. I love it. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. By shedding of the blood of Jesus, the seed is produced. You know how much is the seed? A multitude that no man could number. If that pomegranate, Jesus, was not crushed in the red crimson, we will not have so many seeds. I look at the many seeds redeemed by the blood of the Lamb on this Zoom platform. God bless you, seeds. That's why Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 2, 8, none which none of the princes of the world knew for they had they known it, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. Now, I want you to come with me to the book of Genesis, chapter 4 and verse 10. Do you remember the blood of Abel cried from the ground? Let's go to Hebrews 12, 24. Jesus' blood speaketh better things. His blood speaks louder than your guilt, than your sins, than your addictions, than your frustrations, than your condemnation. His blood is louder than your sickness, your pain, your depression. For you're bought with a price. And how many have really taken the word of God so seriously, people of God? Adam and Eve sinned. They pawned of all humanity to Satan. But God said, hey, these are my property. They had no right to be sold. So God took the ticket and gave it to his son and said, my son, buy back our property. And that's why he came here with blue scarlet. Do you remember? And also purple. Revelation 12, 11 says, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they, love, and they love not their lives unto death. The blood. When the enemy comes to you saying, hey, you are a sinner. Do you remember your sins? You just say, the blood. You used to be the blood. Do you have cancer? Say the blood. The doctor said you have six months to live. You say the blood. If the Satan is standing against you, you say, blood. There's more the pomegranates were paired with bells. Just as the pomegranates were symbol of Christ, the bells are symbolic of the beautiful ministry of intercession. It was not by accident they were put together. Bells and pomegranates. You know, in Luke chapter 4 and verse 1, Jesus was described as being full of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Praise God. The bells could not be activated and make any noise without the pomegranates. Without the blood. Without repentance, without humility, without prayer, without confession, without coming back to God, without calling on the Lord to be saved and belief in the Lord, Jesus, there is no way you can have access to the kingdom of God. But the moment God the Father sees the blood of Jesus applied, he doesn't look at you. We go to some churches, they wear only pomegranates but they silence the bells. Some want only the bells, but no pomegranates. A true Christian will have bells and pomegranates. Who are the seeds? Let me go to Psalm 22. Please come here. Let's uh, try to read this beautiful verse. Uh, A seed shall serve him. 
It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. The pomegranate is Jesus Christ. The golden bell is Jesus Christ. But because of his crimson blood and the blood of Jesus has produced seeds. And this seed, you and me, purchased by the blood of the Lamb, we will sow him. Are you reminded of a beautiful verse from a beautiful, a wonderful prose in the book of Isaiah? Book of Isaiah, chapter 53. I'm very excited. Please read about it in verse 10. It did please the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. That is why God chose pomegranates. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Who of the seed? For whom did he die? Look at the colors of the pomegranate seed. The purple, blue, scarlet. I want to talk about purple. Do you know what color is purple? Purple is a royal color. Jesus Christ is royal. He's the greatest king of glory. He's the king of glory and he's a righteous king. Do you remember 1 Peter 2.9? You are a peculiar people. You are a royal priesthood. Hallelujah. Jesus wears purple. The pomegranate is purple. And you, because of the crimson red blood, you are also royal. Royal people will be persecuted. Scarlet people will be persecuted. Philippians 1.29 says, we have to suffer for his sake. Salvation from heaven. You know, the church today, is supposed to be filled with the noise of God. We have to give a tremendous warning. And we call it the midnight cry. Or the bells ringing in your church. Wherever Jesus went, there was noise. The Bible says that it was noise that he was in the house. People need to know that he is in the house. He is in your life. He is in my life. He is in your chamber. He is in your kitchen. He is in my church. Churches today and saints today are making a lot of noise. But the type of noise that we should be making can come only from pomegranates and bells. The church needs to have bells proclaiming that Jesus Christ is the Lord of life. That the spirit has filled and we are cleansed by the crimson red blood. And we are walking under the anointing, the power, the unction of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. When you got a true noise, it spreads. People can't help but spread it. You read it in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4 and verse 24. Jesus Christ's fame went all over Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse, diverse sickness and torments. Many people were possessed with devils and those that were lunatic and they had the palsy and he healed them. The way people knew if the priest was in God's presence was by the sound of the bells. And the only way you could get any noise is by moving if the bells could not be heard. Which means the priest was dead. And I'm happy. Every time you hear prayers in the church. The bells are ringing. Alive saints make noise. Dead churches don't ring bells. Better be careful about joining yourself. And I'm happy from 1844, there is a church. And this beautiful priest is interceding with his beautiful voice. The priest went into God's presence with the rope tied around him. And if the people could not hear the bells, he was presumed dead. We got many dead saints, many dead preachers, sleeping preachers are preaching to sleeping saints in the sleeping churches. It is time for us to say it loud. Let's go there. We have too many closet Christians, loud and proud inside the church, in the Sabbath school, but outside the walls, they put a trench coat and hide from family, co-workers. Have you ever tried opening up 
about Jesus in a quiet environment outside when you confront a Gentile because you are a silent bell. Some of you are doing the same thing with Christ, ladies and gentlemen, as we now go to the climax of tonight's last point, I want you to look at the proclamation of the decorations. Just three points. These decorations send forth a message. Of Christ, all sound is being sent forth. Do you remember what they told about Jesus? No man spake like this man. Abounding fruitfulness. I want to talk about two things. Bells and pomegranates at the hem of the garment. You know, the bells talk about noise. And the pomegranate talk about silence. But fruitfulness. Bells and pomegranates both talk about lips and life. The life of Christ. People could not find any fault in him. Because his words were golden. And his life was so fruitful. You look at Exodus 29. And verse 36. And if you, if you look at Exodus 28, 35. You know Christians are priests. We have to be like Christ. Whatever you go. We have to be fruitful. Let man take knowledge of you that you came from Jesus. Because your garment is so amazing. And you carry a sound of Christ wherever you go. Do you hear the sound of the gospel bell? Whenever a godly person enters, it's a blessing for you. You may be small and despised. But every time you hear the pastor ring the bell, it carries a clear message. My desire through the Zoom platform is that all need to hear the mercy. Hear the voice of the bells and the testimony of the pomegranate lip and life of Christ and the Christians. Pomegranates should adorn our professional life with professional faith because faith without works is Dead. Did you know that? I want you to look at verse 35. Please look at this. And it shall be upon Aaron to minister. Wow. What is the service? To minister. As the priest served, he wore it with special robe. Christ is the sanctuary. And he is there to minister. Did you know Christ came not to be ministered, but to minister. And it shall be upon Aaron to minister, and his sound shall be heard when he goeth in under the, under the holy place before the Lord, and when he cometh out, that he die not. It speaks about service and sound. His sound, it shall be heard before that he die not. I love it. Hebrews 9. Actually, it must be read hand in hand, with Leviticus. Do you know what does Leviticus mean? You find the word Levi. Levi Tikas. Hebrew. The book of Hebrews has relevance and relationship to Christ through Leviticus. Hebrews 9.1 says holy place. Whale separated. And then you talk about the golden pots having manna. You have the mercy seat. You have the Shekinah. The priest went to the first court. And verse 7 of Hebrews 9, you will be amazed. The high priest went alone, not without blood for himself and others on the day of atonement, which we find in Leviticus 16. And Hebrews 9 and verse 6 talks about accomplishment. Leviticus 6 and verse 1 talks about the annual day of atonement. When making sacrifice, you don't wear that garment. But you wore holy garment when you went inside the most holy place. But once you stop ministering in the holy place, you change your dress. 
dress in white linen inside the most holy place. Did you know that? If the blood were not accepted, all God's people would die on the day of atonement. And if you don't hear the bells ringing, and if you don't take the linen and the holy robe, and again, if you don't hear, there is sadness. But this evening, as I take you to the climax, I want you to look at the pomegranates one more time. Aaron must wear it when he ministers. Oh, Aaron the high priest wore a robe that had tassels of golden bell and pomegranate. Golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe. Arara. And when he walked into the Holy of Holies to meet with God, the chiming of the bells was the only indication for the people in the outer sanctuary to know that all is well inside. I'm sure the people were waiting outside the sanctuary they felt the same way. They had high expectation of the high priest who had gone inside to meet the big boss. Wow. Are you listening tonight? The chiming of the bells would be like music to the ears of the people when Aaron victoriously walked out of the Holy of Holies with his face beaming and glowing, I'm sure. And guess what? After such an encounter, the people would have a direct word for them from God. Besides Aaron himself, the people around were so blessed when one man dares to walk inside to meet with God glory. That man is the high priest and his name is called Jesus Christ. Tonight, we all have the privilege of walking into the Holy of Holies. How many are passionate to walk like Aaron into the inner sanctuary? Not many. We are addicted to work and money, but we are not passionate toward God and his sanctuary. Don't miss eternal life for frivolous reasons. We would skip church even if it drizzles or even if the car breaks down or somebody has a slight headache. Give up. We walk into the church uh, unashamedly after the Sabbath school is over, not even a bit convicted of a reckless attitude toward the house of God. No wonder many Christians' homes are like war zones. Now, sometimes people prefer police stations and how high courts than the holy court of God. Are we listening, friends? Not many would want to take the risk of wearing a robe with the golden bell and a pomegranate to meet God. Many prefer to go in with stonewashed jeans and t-shirt. Like the dasical attitude toward God is abomination to him. I'm not talking about your physical attire, but I'm pointing to a spiritual attitude toward God. God wants us to comply to his rules and get closer to him rather than fear the rules and walk further away. Are you there? I've come as a light. Let's come to Jesus tonight with all our brokenness, rejection, and the pain. What do you think Aaron wore those clothes of the high priest and ministered to the Lord? The golden bells and the pomegranates reminded him of death if he failed to comply with God's rule. Et, what made him passionately pursue God? His failures his sins, his brokenness. I want to talk about this. The death of two sons, Nadab and Abihu, broke his heart to a million pieces. And the pain was so deep and so because they died by the hands of God due to disobedience. If there was any place that could offer him peace and restoration and forgiveness and comfort, it was the presence of God. Are you going through stuff, people of God? I'm speaking to somebody out there for people who have been beaten thoroughly and stripped of all your life. There is nowhere else to turn except to the Holy of Holies. Come to the bells and pomegranates. Ripped of all the unwanted stuff from you. Fall down on your knees. Hear the bells tonight. Let it chime. Turn to your direction to the bells and pomegranates. Arise, arise, arise. Get into the sanctuary of God. When people did not care to respond 
for all the other days, the day of atonement was so amazing. As I bring this to a close, I want to tell you, on the day of atonement, it was Aaron's personal responsibility to take the blood of the sacrifice into the holy of holies on behalf of all God's people so that they can receive forgiveness. Tonight, it's not your problem and my problem. The blood of Jesus, of the heavenly high priest Jesus, is present. His responsibility required that he is a sanctified person and that he would be dressed in holy garments. Tonight, I want to close with two slides. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. It doesn't say they hear the joyful sound. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, the Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Wow. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know the joyful sound? The blood has a voice. The blood speaks. The blood of Abel. Blood has a voice. Priest moves around. Tonight, Jesus is moving in the most holy place. Not physical bell, but intercessory bells are ringing. Blood is accepted. Our sins are atoned. His work is saving. There was silence for three days after his death. But on the third day, praise God, the bells were ringing. He is accepted. Golden bells are sound for us as he's interceding. The ground of the blood. Today, we rejoice. Do you know why? We are accepted in the beloved. Ephesians 1.6. Accepted in the beloved. When Jesus was baptized, Matthew 3, 17, this is my beloved son. We are accepted not because of Sabbath and tithe and vegetarianism. We are accepted in the beloved, exalted because of Jesus. God sees my Savior. The gospel bells are ringing. The gospel bells are ringing. Oh. From sea to sea, blessed news of free salvation, do they offer you and me? For God so loved the world, that His only Son He gave, whosoever shall have gospel bells how they ring over land from sea to sea gospel bells really bring blessed news to you and me let us pray heavenly father Thank you for speaking to us through the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the sanctuary. Thy way, O oh God, is in the sanctuary. Many times we have forgotten to study the bells and the pomegranates. Thank you for the bells. Thank you for the intercessory ministry. If we didn't hear the bells ringing, we know that the priest was dead. Praise God for the gospel bells are ringing. Thank you for ringing on the chimes of the bells. Amazing is the ministry, the intercessory ministry of Christ. But we also have the tassels of the blue, scarlet, purple, pomegranate at the hem of the robe. Thank you for the finished work of Jesus. Thank you for God. Thank you for the Son of Man. Thank you for the God-Man. 100% God, 100% divine. Thank you for the seeds. Thank you for the crimson red blood shed. 
Thank you, Lord. You're coming soon. Thank you for the blessing of salvation by the high priest who liveth. And as we respond tonight, we want to say, we listen to the bells ringing. We accept it. Father, bring our names. And we are so excited to know that you are praying our names. Cover us with your blood. Cover us with your robe of righteousness. We give all the glory and honor to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We give all the glory to God. People of God, tomorrow night, Tuesday, June the 9th, you may not want to miss this. We're going to study about another priestly garment in our sanctuary series. And it is called the embroidered. So there should be B, embroidered coat. Today we studied about bells and pomegranates. Tomorrow we will study about embroidered coat. Looking forward, if God willing, to connect with all of you by the grace of God tomorrow at 7 p.m. India Standard Time. By the grace of God, as we embark on this beautiful study, the embroidered coat on Tuesday, June 9th, 2020, at 7 p.m. India Standard Time. God bless you. The gospel bells are ringing over land from sea to sea. Blessed news of free salvation. So love the world that his only son he gave. Whosoever believeth in him, everlasting life shall have. Gospel bells. For those of you who would like to watch this again in your free time, and for those of them who have not had the privilege, uh, you can go right now to the YouTube. Uh, you just type bells and pomegranates. You can watch it anytime. Thank you so very much. And may the Lord continue to be with you.